Knowing what to write down in your notes can be tricky. And if you're used to just copying down what the professor writes on the board from high school or just because you're not sure what should be going in your notes, it can make it even harder when you get to college. The mistake that I see a lot of students making is either they don't write any notes at all because they're overwhelmed and they're not sure what they should be writing down or I find that they're rewriting the PowerPoints, rewriting the textbooks, rewriting everything that the professor is saying in class, and that's not helpful when it comes down to studying for the exam. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to write notes in a way that it serves as a study guide for you to prepare for exams, prepare for writing your papers, prepare for presentations or discussion questions, and it just makes the process super fast. It makes it so that you know exactly what's important, what your professor's gonna test you on, and what you're in class to learn. Hey, I'm Clarissa, a mindset and study strategy coach for college women who wanna earn A's while having study-free weekends. In this video, I'm gonna teach you my super simple method for taking notes that I've taught to over 385 plus college students that allows them to get through their reading, their PowerPoints, their lectures, and their notes in under two hours. This is a twist on the Cornell method of notes, and I'm gonna explain in this video why it works, why it's helpful, and why every other method of note taking just overcomplicates it. And so if you want to do really well in your classes, you don't want to spend a lot of time rewriting notes, writing your notes, writing flashcards, this is a video that you're going to want to watch. So if we take a look at the definition of notes, the intention or their purpose of taking notes is to jot down important facts, topics, and thoughts to either later memorize or to have as a reference for when you need to use it. And so knowing that that's the definition and the purpose of notes, I'm gonna use that definition to help you understand why this modified method of Cornell note taking is the best way to write your notes. So typically when you're enrolled in a class, you are enrolled in the class because you're there to learn about a topic, you're there to learn some facts, and you're there to share your thoughts and opinions on whatever it is that you're covering in the class. And so your notes need to contain the topics, it needs to contain the facts, and it needs to contain your thoughts about what it is that you're learning. And the way that I teach my students to know exactly what facts to write down, to know exactly what thoughts they should be having about the information that they're learning, and what topics to pay attention to and make sure that they create a summary around in their notes is by using two very key things from their classes. So the first piece that I have students look at is their syllabus. The reason why I have students take a look at their syllabus is because the syllabus will typically give a general description about what the class is intended for, what you're meant to get out of it, what they're there to teach you, the things that you're supposed to be able to demonstrate that you have a knowledge of at the end of the course or on an exam or on a paper. And so if you take a look at the syllabus objectives, the course objectives, the course descriptions, that will tell you the facts that you're expected to know. It will tell you the thought process that pro the professor is going to be using when they're talking about whatever topic it is that your class is about. And it'll also um, give you a list of the topics that you're going to be diving into in the class. Now, the syllabus is a general um, overview of what's going to be covered in the class. And so I typically have students go over that first just to prime their mind to to what facts, what topics, and what thoughts they're gonna to want to include in their notes and pay attention to when they're taking notes in lecture from a PowerPoint or from a textbook. The first thing that you wanna do is look at the course description and read it thoroughly. So this is an introductory course designed for science majors that investigate cell and molecular biology, including biochemical processes, cellular function, genetics, and the biology of microbes. So in this sentence, you are getting an overview of everything that you're supposed to be able to talk about intelligently and answer questions about intelligently in your exam and once you're done with the course. This course also has a laboratory component um, that uh, includes the collection, analysis, interpretation of cellular and molecular data. 
So this introduction, uh, this description, again, just gives you a basic overview. A lot of the information on what you can expect to see on your exam is going to come from your course outcomes and your course objectives. So in this case, um, by the end of this semester, this is what the student will be expected to be able to do. So this is what your professor is going to be testing you on because they need to make sure that they're doing their job. They, there needs to be a way for them to gauge whether or not you are getting out of the class what you're supposed to get. And so by requirement, they need to lay that out for you. Now, the second place that I tell students to pull their information from tends to be a little bit more specific. So this is from your PowerPoint, this is from your actual lecture content, and this is from your textbook or any assigned readings that you get. Typically, these four things, your PowerPoint, your lecture, your textbook, or any other assigned reading will have some sort of an objective, topic outcomes or chapter outcomes, a summary, a purpose that the person writing the article was intending to make when they wrote the article. And so when you know what to look for, i.e. the objectives or the outcomes, what this tells you is exactly the topics, the facts, and the thoughts that are important to your professor. Now the hierarchy goes like this. So whatever your professor is teaching in lecture, meaning they're verbally explaining, it's typically coming from the textbook. That's why the textbook was assigned to you or whatever uh, reading assignment was given to you. If you're taking a English course, it might be some sort of fiction or nonfiction book, same thing with like a philosophy class, etc. So whatever reading assignment they gave you, when they're lecturing, in lecture, they're lecturing on the material that they told you to read. The PowerPoint is a condensed version of the textbook or the assigned reading and what they're discussing in class. So it doesn't really matter of those different areas, what you pick, what I teach students is to pick one. Then what you wanna do is based off of the topics, the course objectives, the titles, you actually wanna start creating questions from those things to help you to pay attention to the answers to those questions because the answers to those questions are the things that you're gonna want to note down. And remember when we looked at the definition of notes, notes are you writing important topics, important thoughts, important facts that you're either gonna wanna memorize later because you're gonna be tested on it for an exam or that you're gonna wanna have as a reference, say for example, if you're gonna be answering discussion questions or if you're gonna be writing a paper on the topic. That's truly the purpose of notes. And if you're someone that struggles with what actually goes in those notes, what topics, what facts, what thoughts you should be writing down, the method that I teach is to use those objectives, to use the titles, to to use the big like headlines that you see in your textbook or on your PowerPoint or that your professor is writing down on the board and start to create questions around them. The questions are gonna help you to know what to pay attention to. And typically I have students write their questions before they sit down to write a lecture. I have an entire video on this process all about how to study for online classes and in-person classes and I'll make sure to link that down below. Um, and I also have a really in-depth video on how to do your textbook readings with this uh, modified version of the Cornell method of notes. The reason why this is a modified method of the Cornell notes is because typically with Cornell notes, they have you taking notes in class and then once class is done, you are told to create questions from the information. The reason why I don't think that that is a great way to write your notes is because if you're someone who struggles with what's important and what's not important, you you tend to rewrite the textbook, rewrite the PowerPoint, rewrite um, everything that your professor is saying in lecture and everything seems important. But when you go into it looking at the purpose of the class using the syllabus, looking at those course outcomes, those course objectives or the PowerPoint outcomes or the PowerPoint objectives and you write your question ahead of time, this is gonna condense what you end up writing down in your notes because as you're in class, what you're writing down are the answers to the questions that you create. And again, I have a video all on how to do this which is linked down in the description box. So in this case, we're covering changes that occur in puberty. 
most of the time, your questions are going to come directly from the title of the slide that, prof that the professor is going over. So right here, I can see that this professor was going over changes that occurred in puberty for both males and females. So automatically, I would go to my notebook and I would go ahead and write in what are some physiological changes that occur in males and females during puberty. Then under the answers section, I would use the information that was provided to me in the PowerPoint and I would write that down. So for females, I would do breast changes, growth spur, etc. And I would do the same for males. Then I would go on to the next slide. The next slide is talking about hormones. So another question that I could ask myself is, what are the hom hormones that govern puberty for both males and females? And then again, I would do males, testosterone, and I would just come back to the slide and I would pull the information that was on this particular slide. I would go through all the slides while the professor is going over it, and usually the question is going to come right from the title of the slide. And then if they have any subcategories, like in this case, She's talking about the three different cycles of menstruation. I can also pull questions from these different topics. So a question that I could ask myself to see if I master the information is, what are the different phases of the endometrial cycle? So I would come over here and I would write it down. What are the different phases of the endometrial cycle? And then as the, the professor is covering it in class, I would write in what that was. Now, if you're someone who really wants to learn how to earn A's without having to cram every single weekend, I have a free workshop that you can sign up for, which is called How to Earn A's All Semester Long Without Cramming Every Single Weekend that you can sign up for. And it's gonna walk you through my two-hour study routine, how I teach students to study two hours at a time, earn A's and B's so that they can live the rest rest of their life carefree, stress-free, and without having to make college their entire life. The reason why I wanted to film this video is because I see way too many study with me YouTubers that are giving you really complicated ways to write your notes. All of these different methods, they're stressing you out, overwhelming you with the idea of flashcards and notability and like all these apps. And none of that is important. Like n all of those things are just tools. They're not going to help you to know what you should write down in your notes. And that's really the most important thing about good note taking is going into your reading, going into your lecture, going into whatever place it is, PowerPoint that you're using and understanding why you're writing down what you're writing down, why it's important and how it's gonna be used on an exam, how it's gonna be used in a discussion questions, how it's gonna be used in a possible essay question. And the method that I taught you today is gonna to help you to do just that. So I wanna hear from you. What I want you to do is in the comments, I want you to let me know what your biggest issue is with note taking. Is it that you write too little or that you write too much? Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.